Top 10 Most Successful Businesses in Shark Tank Hey guys, welcome back to Film Boss. Today we are ranking the top 10 most successful Shark Tank businesses. But before we start the video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to join our notification squad. That being said, let's dive right into the video. Entrepreneurs who make it onto a Shark Tank episode have the opportunity to introduce their company to a viewing audience of 7 million potential customers. The companies that land a deal with one or more of the show's investors then have the chance to scale. In some cases, become nationally recognized as a brand. So here are the top 10 most successful Shark Tank businesses. Number 10, Scrub Daddy. A sponge company has far and away became the biggest Shark Tank success story. Over the past three years, Scrub Daddy has brought in a total of $75 million in revenue. According to investor Lori Greiner, Greiner made a deal with its founder and CEO, Aaron Krauss, in Season 4 for $200,000 in exchange for 20% equity. At that point, Krauss had struggled. At that point, Krauss had struggled to reach $100,000 in sales over 18 months. But Griner saw a great potential in the company's signature offering, a proprietary smiley face sponge that was most durable, hygienic, and effective than a traditional one. Number 9, Tipsy Elves. When Robert Herjavec invested $100,000 for 10% of Evan Mendelssohn and Nick Morton's ugly Christmas sweater company in season 4, it could seem to viewers that he was betting on a fleeting fad. It turned out, though, that it was his most profitable Shark Tank investment. He told the Business Insider to stay ahead of trends. Herjavec helped make Tipsy Elves a year-round novelty apparel company that can capitalize on multiple holidays and the college football season. Number 8. Bubba's Q Boneless Ribs Al Bubba Baker, the 1978 NFL Defense Rookie of the Year, secured a deal with John in Season 5 for $300,000 in exchange for 30% equity in and licensing rights to his company, Bubba's Q Boneless Ribs. John told the Business Insider that as someone who has built a career in fashion, he never expected that his most profitable investment would be in rib business. Number 7. Grace and Lace In Season 5, Barbara Corcoran, invested $175,000 for 10% of the husband and wife duo, Melissa and Rick Hinnant's fashion company, Grace and Lace. Corcoran told Business Insider that it's her most profitable Shark Tank investment. Before their appearance, the Hinnants brought in $1 million worth of sales. They are now expecting $6.5 million this year, a boost helped by an appearance in Cosmopolitan magazine. Number 6. 1031 Productions In Season 5, Cuban decided to put up $2 million for 20% of Melissa Carbone's live horror entertainment company, 1031 Productions. Last year, the company brought in $300 million in revenue. And although he did not disclose an exact number, Cuban told us it is making at least half a million dollars in annual profit. Number 5. Wicked Good Cupcakes Tracy Noonan and Danielle Villaggi are a mother-daughter duo from Boston, with a company that makes cupcakes in a jar. In Season 4, they made a deal with O'Leary in which he invested $75,000 for royalties instead of equity. He made $1 from every cupcake sold until he made his money back, and then began receiving 50 cents per cupcake sold. Since its appearance on the show, Wicked Good Cupcakes has expanded to a new production facility and a couple of new locations. Number 4. Red Dress Boutique Cuban and Herjavec split a $1.2 million investment for 10% equity in Diana and Josh Harbour's online women fashion retailer, The Red Dress Boutique, in Season 6. With Cuban taking the lead advisory role, in the week following their television appearance, the husband and wife team brought in $1 million in sales, but they couldn't keep up with the demand. Cuban helped them with the infrastructure issues, and last year, they brought in $14 million in revenue. Number 3. Bombas In Season 6, Bombas co-founders gave John a 17.5% stake in their company for $200,000. It is an online-only athletic sock company that donates a pair of socks to homeless shelters for every pair sold. Bombas founders told radio host Jason Bax that they sold $400,000 worth of socks in the four days after their television appearance, and ended in 2014 with $2 million worth of sales. Number 2. Simple Sugar 
Lani Lazari was just 18 when she entered the tank in season 4 to pitch her skincare company, Simple Sugars. She ended up making a deal with Cuban for about $100,000 in return for 33% equity. Within just 24 hours of her episode's premiere, Lazari's sales jumped to 220000 from 50000 and she hit the $1 million mark six weeks later. Today, Simple Sugar's products are in more than 700 retail locations and ship internationally. Now that brings us to the number one spot, but before revealing that, are you guys enjoying the video? If so, please like and share this and subscribe to our channel. Now let's continue out to our number one pick. Number one, Grovebook. Husband and wife team Brian and Julie Whiteman came into the tank in season three to present Grovebook, a digital photo subscription service for $2.99 a month. Users get a bound book of high resolution photos they took with their smartphones. The founders made a deal with Cuban and O'Leary for $150,000 in exchange for 80% of licensing profits. With O'Leary taking the lead as advisory role, not only did the Whitemans gain 50,000 subscribers shortly after the premiere of their episode, but last November, the publicly traded company Shutterfly bought Grovebook for $14.5 million. That's the end of our video, guys. Thanks for watching it. See you next time, and until then, thank you and goodbye.